two of the world's continents lie entirely within the southern hemisphere, Australia and Antarctica. Australia lies relatively close to the equator while Antarctica is situated about the south geographic pole. Antarctica is almost entirely covered by an ice sheet. At its thickest, the ice is over 4 km deep and beneath it there is a hidden landscape of mountains, valleys and plains. This dome shaped ice sheet has been formed by the accumulation of snow over hundreds of thousands of years. The ice generally flows from the center of the continent towards the surrounding ocean and the Antarctic has thousands of glaciers extending into the sea. Great pieces of ice break away at the coast and drift away as icebergs. Huge icebergs, some larger than the Australian capital territory have been observed. Although normally there are several hundred meters to several kilometers in length. Antarctica is unique among the continents for being almost totally covered by glacier ice. Antarctica has very vast landforms. It is almost totally covered in glacier ice. Although this ice cover in its entirety is often referred to as a single ice sheet. There are in fact two major areas of ice which differ from each other in both their physical characteristics and history, the East and West Antarctic ice sheets. The East Antarctic ice sheet is both larger and thicker than the West Antarctic ice sheet as well as being much older. Antarctica also has many mountains. Most of the continent's coastline is fringed by ice shelves. It is also about 2% barren rock and about 98% is covered in ice sheets. Antarctica is also a polar desert because it gets less than 3 inches of rain a year. Antarctica has many icebergs, ice caves and ice mountains. It has snow that stretches for miles and miles. They barely have any vegetation because of the harsh climate. The continent also has dry valleys. Antarctica is an archipelago. The highest point in Antarctica is Vincent Massif and their lowest point is Benle subglacial trench. Antarctica's coastline is 17,968 kilometers long. Their maximum ice thickness is 8,188 feet. Their highest mountain is Mount Vinson, which is 4,892 meters. It's also called Vinson Massif. In addition to the continental landmass, Antarctica has several large and small islands. For example, the South Shetland Islands just north of the Antarctic Peninsula. Some of Antarctica's islands are permanently linked to the mainland by sea, whereas others are connected only seasonally in step with the pattern of sea ice expansion and retreat. Much of the continent's coastline is fringed by ice shelves. The largest of these are the Ross Ice Shelf in the Ross Sea and the Rhone Ice Shelf in the Weddell Sea. Each of these ice shelves covers an area greater than the British Isles. While the ice comprises about 90% of Antarctica's surface, there are areas of bare rock, the greatest rock exposures being in the Antarctica Peninsula 
and the Transantarctic Mountains. The most significant ice-free areas of the Australian Antarctic Territory are the Bunger Hills and the Westfall Hills near Davis. During the winter months, it becomes so cold that the sea surrounding Antarctica freezes for hundreds of kilometers offshore. This ice breaks up to form pack ice which under the action of winds and currents is constantly changing form and distribution. The southern ocean which surrounds Antarctica consists of the northernmost part of the Atlantic, Indian and Pacific Oceans. In the sub-Antarctic between 50 degrees south and 60 degrees south, there are small islands. Some of them like Australia's Heard Island are almost completely capped by glaciers while others such as Makori Island are ice free and have no permanent snow cover. Dry Valleys The dry valleys are an Antarctic anomaly. While most of the continent is covered in a thick layer of ice, the dry frigid valleys are almost entirely ice free an arid expanse of mostly dirt, small rocks and big boulders. The valleys are dotted with a few frozen lakes and during the austral summer are etched with short leaf streams that link the lakes with surrounding glaciers, some of which reach the valley flows. Dry valleys are another intriguing type of landscape found in Antarctica. These are found in high altitude areas of extreme aridity. Good examples can be found in the Victoria land region near the McMurdo research station. Some low lying coastal areas of Antarctica particularly along the peninsula have microclimatic and topographic conditions which cause enough melting during the austral summer to allow some land to remain free of glaciers. Researchers have discovered that the dry valleys are home to variety of organisms that live in extreme environments. Among them are lichen and mosses, communities of microbes and microscopic worms. Researchers continue to find and study these and other organisms and their adaptations which allow them to survive in one of the most punishing environments on the planet. We will now talk about the mountains, rivers, lakes and waterfalls of the continent. First, we shall talk about the mountains. Except for coastal peaks, only the highest Antarctic mountains show above the ice cap, some by only a few hundred meters. The highest point is the Vincent Massif at 5140 meters above sea level. Mount Vincent reaches a little higher than Mount Blanc in the European Alps. The extensive Prince Charles Mountains in land of Mosin and the Trans-Antarctic Mountains in the eastern sector contain the highest peaks in the AAT. The AAT also contains the world's largest glacier, the Lombard Glacier. The Trans-Antarctic range contains many peaks above 4000 meters. However, the highest mountain in Antarctic, Mount Vinson, is part of the Ellsworth Mountains located in the western area of the continent near the Antarctic Peninsula. While Antarctic does have high mountains, it is not because of its mountains that it has the distinction of being the highest continents on earth. 
it is because of the thickness of its ice sheets. Due to this ice cover, Antarctica has the highest average surface elevation of all the continents at around 2000 meters above sea level. There are four volcanoes on the mainland of Antarctica that are considered to be active and they are Mount Melbourne, Mount Kaufman, Mount Berlin and Mount Hampton. Several volcanoes on offshore islands have records of historic activity. Mount Erebus on Rose Island with 10 known eruptions and one suspected eruption. On the opposite side of the continent, Deception Island, a volcanic area with 10 known and 4 suspected eruptions have been the most active. Now we shall talk about the rivers. The Onyx Rivers is an Antarctic meltwater stream which flows westward through the Wright Valley from Wright Lower Glacier and Lake Brownworth at the foot of the glacier to Lake Wanda during the few months of the Antarctic summer. Despite being only 32 kilometers in length, it is the longest river in Antarctica. Talking about the lakes, Antarctica has nearly 400 lakes trapped under its ice sheet. Some of them like Lake Williams are connected by rivers and streams. Others are deep isolated basins like Lake Vostok where drillers have yet to successfully recover uncontaminated water samples. The new Lake Williams discovery raises scientists hope that these other hidden waterways also carry life. Crushed under ice, Lake Williams is not like a pond or lake at the surface. The environment is more like the deep ocean floor which is cold and starved for nutrients. Waterfalls Antarctica is home to one of the continent's most unique features the Rust Red Blood Falls. One of the world's most extreme deserts might be the last place one would expect to find a waterfall. But in Antarctica's Makmurdo Dry Valley, a five-story fall pours slowly out of the Taylor Glacier into Lake Boney. The waterfall is bright red like blood running from a cut in the glacier. But in addition to being cut off from the rest of the continent, the water that feeds blood falls is completely cut off from the atmosphere. It has never seen sunlight and is completely devoid of oxygen. It is also extremely rich in iron which was churned into the water by glaciers scrapping the bedrock below the lake. When water from the subglacial lake seeps through the fissure in the glacier, the salty water cascades down the Taylor Glacier into Lake Boney below. When the iron rich water comes into contact with the air, it rusts depositing blood red stains on the ice as it falls. Antarctica holds the record for the coldest surface air temperature ever recorded on the planet, a frigid minus 89.2 degrees Celsius. Surface air temperature data collected from different locations in Antarctica show considerable variations across the continent, particularly between coastal and inland locations. But even so, the average temperature for Antarctica is far colder than any of the other continents and colder than Arctic. Antarctica is also distinctive for being the coldest and the driest. 
it comes as no surprise that Antarctica is coldest given its geographical positions. Yet it may at first seem surprising that it is also the driest. Despite being covered in snow and ice, mean annual precipitation is very low and the climate can be described as a polar desert. Rather than being the result of high levels of snowfall, the vast Antarctic ice sheets exist because the cold temperature year round prevents what little snow and frost that accumulates from melting. Hence, the ice sheets have been able to build up from small annual inputs of ice crystals over a very long period of time. Very little of the continent and its islands are free from glacier ice and these ice free areas of their existence to specific local scale factors. High winds and steep slopes prevent snow and ice from accumulating on parts of these mountains. The climate of Antarctica is also very windy and dry. Wind speeds vary across the continent, but the idea that Antarctica is a kind of desert requires some explanation here. The relative humidity of air at the South Pole is often as low as 0.03 percent and the continent is a polar desert. This may at first sight seem surprising with 99 percent of its area being covered by ice and Antarctica certainly does not conform to the image that most people have of a desert. Yet, most of Antarctica is classed as a desert on the basis of its mean annual precipitation. What little precipitation there is mostly falls as snow, averaging less than 50 mm a year across much of the interior. This is in the hyper-arid category shared with the Sahara, Nabib, Atacama and other great deserts of the world. The presence of much ice is despite such low precipitation. Climate change Antarctica and its surrounding ocean are dominated and shaped by the presence of snow and ice which while themselves controlled by the climatic regime and very sensitive to climate change, also influence and provide major feedbacks to the global climate system. Many globally significant processes are driven by the unique climate and geography of the Antarctic region. These include the uptake of carbon dioxide by the southern ocean, the overturning circulation of the deep ocean, the balance between water storage and discharge in the main continental ice sheet, changes in surface energy, mass and momentum exchange by ice masses and energy transfer between all levels of the atmosphere to space. Understanding this process is vital for understanding and predicting climate and environmental changes and their impacts. These impacts include future greenhouse gas levels, sea level rise, the variability and rate of change of climate and changes in atmospheric composition. The things to do in Antarctica are most of the most unique things to do in the world. There are not many places where one can sit at arm's length from a penguin, see some of the largest icebergs in the world. The most prominent attractions are Antarctic Peninsula. The Antarctic Peninsula is the northernmost part of the mainland of Antarctica located at the base of the southern hemisphere. At the surface, 
It is the biggest most prominent peninsula in Antarctica as it extends 1300 kilometer from a line between Cape Adams and a point on the mainland south of Eckland Islands. Many first time visitors may not realize that most cruisers spend much of their expedition time on and around the Antarctic Peninsula. The Antarctic Peninsula is currently dotted with numerous research stations and nations have made multiple claims of sovereignty. The peninsula is part of disputed and overlapping claims by Argentina, Chile and the United Kingdom. None of these claims has international recognition and under the Antarctic Treaty System. Deception Island Deception Island has played an important role in the history of Antarctica. This is said to be one of the safest harbors in Antarctica. Since the 19th century, whalers and seal hunters have used the island as a safe refuge from storms and icebergs. In the early 20th century, a Norwegian whaling company used the island as their base of operations until it was abandoned in the 1930s. Today, the island serves mostly as a tourist destination and the same harbour that attracted whalers now attracts cruise ships. Once on shore, Passengers may hike around the abandoned village and walk up the beach to the lookout point known as Neptune's Billows. This is also where many adventurous souls decide to wade into the lukewarm waters for the badge of honor known as the ultimate cold water swim. Drake Passage Perhaps one of the most infamous water channels in the world. The Drake is an important passage for many visitors to Antarctica. The passage is named after the famous explorer Sir Francis Drake who accidentally discovered the body of water in the 16th century. The Drake lies between the southern tip of South America and the South Shetland Islands and connects the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans carrying an immense volume of water which in part has made this traditionally treacherous body of water. Due to the unimpeded waters and its positions on the globe, rough seas and fierce storms are commonplace in the passage. Seas with waves more than 30 feet high are not uncommon and because of these waters, many passengers report extreme nausea during their trip to Antarctica. The rough seas are also why many people select to fly direct to Antarctica on a fly cruise, thereby skipping the rolling waves of the passage. South Shetland Islands Located north of Antarctica, these islands stand as a gateway to the continent and are a frequent stop for tourists. One can hike for hours there, not only because of the knee-deep snow slowing your steps, but also because of the amazing panoramic views. Gentle penguins wobble nearby, seals bask in the sun and various seabirds circle overhead. In addition to the wildlife, Artifacts from past decades of human activity can be found all around. We have come to our conclusion and can say that the term Antarctic regions refer to all areas, oceanic, island and continental lying in the cold Antarctic climate zone south of the Antarctic convergence, an important boundary with little seasonal variability, where warm subtropical waters meet and mix with cold polar waters. For legal purposes of the Antarctic Treaty 
an arbitrary boundary of latitude 60 degrees south is used. The familiar map boundaries of the continent known as Antarctica defined as the south polar landmass and all its non-floating grounded ice are subject to change with future changes of climate. The continent was ice free during most of its lengthy geologic history and there is no reason to believe it will not become so again in the probably distant future. Thank you.